Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is September 28th, and right now we are looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. You got BC, Washington, Oregon off to the right. Check out our next frontal system. It is knocking on our doorstep here. We're going to take a look at what kind of impacts that will have across the region, and we'll take a look at the extended forecast. Some of the models are showing some active weather moving back into the region. We'll look at that as we always do as we go through the video this morning, taking a look at where we are right now, updating that. You can see there are some lenticular clouds out there across the Cascades. And if I scroll back and forth, you can kind of see that some sunshine across eastern Washington, Oregon. But you can quickly see the clouds approaching off the coastline here with the approach of our next frontal system. Now, Sunday fire spread risk and blowing dust. Well, can National Weather Service calling attention to this? Probably not as windy for some individual locations, but it doesn't take much to really bring some of that blowing dust across some of the highways and the freeways out there, especially around the recently worked field, and you could have some rapid fire spread also. This is for Sunday, again, Pendleton, Oregon, eastern portions. Watch out for that rapid fire spread potential and blowing dust. Looking at SeaTac yesterday, 66 degrees, two degrees below average, 300 of inch rain officially, 0.62 so far this month, almost an inch below average, pretty big deal for September, and we're probably not going to get anywhere near the average for the year. And you can see we're wrapping up the end of the month right about 67 degrees for our average temperatures this time of year. I checked on this weather station here, right now near Ritzville, Washington. And if I scroll in here, you can see it does update you if there's any kind of fire watch, if there's a winter weather advisory, a high wind warning, for example. And you can click on that and it shows the discussion and what the risks are and whatnot. So yeah, very nice um, thing here on your app. You can check that on your smartphone or your desktop. You can see the wind updating every few seconds. And you can see you can graph any one of these parameters here and you can see the wind updating as we speak. It's not raining right now. The UV index just starting to peak up here as the sun rises. So if you want one of these weather stations, click on that link down below to save 10% off. Now let's compare the European on the left versus the GFS on the right. What is to come? Well, here goes our initial frontal system here. Not packing a big punch here, but it will bring some breezing conditions, mainly east of the Cascades. Again, we'll take a look at those winds here in a moment. Building a little bit of a ridge here as a strong storm moves up towards southeast Alaska as we go through the day Tuesday. And then you can see we do get some of this troughing, trying to drop down in here a little bit quicker on the European. <clears throat> the GFS wants to hold that back a little bit, but then eventually swings the trough through here. And then you can see we've got some active weather potentially going on in through the end of next week. So we're going to be watching that uh, carefully. You can see there is differences in the timing on that system than the Gulf of Alaska troughing fairly active here, a little bit more so on the European model, but that could also spawn some ridging and maybe we'll get a couple nice days out of that. We'll see how that goes and we'll keep revisiting that on a daily basis. So looking at the North American model, hot off the press is the 12Z run. So this is the 5 a.m. run this morning, 80 meter wind speed. So you'll see not nothing too strong across the region as far as winds, but you see them pick up this afternoon a little bit across the Cascades here and then they really start ramping up as we go through tonight across the Cascades. A little bit of a westerly surge down the Strait of Juan de Fuca by Sunday morning, you're going to notice those gusty winds out there. And especially as we go through Sunday afternoon, you can see the winds ripping across Washington and Oregon. Probably not as intense as last round, but still could kick up the blowing dust and have some of the rapid fire spread associated with those gusty winds and low relative humidities. So if we take a look at composite reflectivity, I'm going to put this into motion and you can see this is our frontal system here. So it does bring a little bit of rainfall, but it's not much. You see this kind of quickly moves through as we go through tonight. Not much precipitation there east of the mountains either. Maybe some residual showers as we go through Sunday morning and then that eventually will clear out as we build a little bit of ridging off the coastline as we go through Monday and then we'll wait to see what comes next. So if we take a look at the European, something similar here as well. If you go through Sunday, you can kind of see just a little bit of precipitation. It's not showing much for the region, but that system, stronger storm in the southeast Alaska, kind of a decaying front moving down, probably at some point on Tuesday or Tuesday night. And then as we go off into the extended forecast, there is a possibility for some troughing out there. And then we'll see what's in store as we go on in through the early portion in the first week of October after that. You don't want to put too much stock in that right now because if you've been watching the channel, you know how badly the models have been flipping and flopping on the position and the strength of these troughs as we look too far out in the forecast. Looking at the GFS, total precipitation in inches, a little bit of a fantasy forecast look here, but you can see the lion's share initially moving into British Columbia glancing blow from that very weak decaying frontal system. Then we have to go way out to like 150 plus hours. We start to bring some precipitation into Oregon. And if we scroll out far enough, you can kind of see some precipitation moving into Washington, but it's so far out there. It's purely fantasy forecast right now. 
So we're still waiting for some of that uh, those bigger precipitation amounts to make their way south. Looking at uh, fantasy windstorm forecasts. So we look all the way out. We can look all the way out to October 13th there. And you can see there's just a very few smatterings of some 40 plus mile per hour gusts. Nothing huge lurking off in our extended forecast as of right now. It's that time of year where you can start to look at this and just kind of see, you know, there's nothing in store right now, but every once in a while you'll see one pop up. There are a few decent gusts in there, some ramblings, random ensemble members there, but nothing at all to get uh, even concerned about. Looking at Seattle Tacoma on the GFS, the precipitation and the ensembles, you can kind of see how this is just all over the place. Some of these do have some heavier amounts, but they are few and far between. The control run virtually has nothing here for Seattle on the GFS for the next two weeks as of last night. But this can change quite quickly this time of year. You saw there are some troughs out there in our forecast. So we'll break this down again tomorrow. Taking a look at the accumulated max 10 meter wind gusts one more time. I just want to kind of show you that there are some gusts approaching 50 miles per hour. You can kind of see out towards Ellensburg or, you know, maybe a little bit further east out towards Vantage and whatnot. And then as we go through Sunday evening, there's some gusts up over 40 miles per hour out there. So heads up again one more time for that. And if we look at the GFS here of the next couple weeks for Seattle, you can kind of see kind of seasonably cool here as we move on into the early portion of October. Nothing to get too worried about, nothing striking in our extended forecast. Wave actions, you can see that as we go through the day today, we are reducing the wave activity across the Washington, Oregon coast. Then we're going to have this strong storm move into southeast Alaska, and that will eventually spread another bump down across Vancouver Island uh, on Tuesday. Then as we go through Wednesday, you can see that moving down across Washington, Oregon, and then eventually that starts to wane here as well. Then maybe some of that trough, you know, bring in additional bumps as we go off in the extended forecast. Uh, six to 10 day precipitation outlook, October 3rd through 7th here, a lot of the West below normal here, some near normal for the very extreme portion of Northwest Washington, six to 10 day above average signal here as well as we go through October 7th. And here's looking at the last six months. This is max temperature precipitation departure from average, actually temperature departure from average, sorry, not precipitation. And you can see the West has really been dominated by above average uh, temperatures. You can see some of the Oregon Cascades, some areas Northeast of the Cascades there across the Eastern Oregon, but you're kind of cherry picking for those individual areas. Virtually all the Pacific Northwest or the majority of it has been above average the last six months. And here's the last six months as far as precipitation here. There are some areas that did get above normal here, but the vast majority again has been below average since March 27th. So yeah, anyway, we're going to revisit this all again tomorrow. I'm back to work today here for a few days. Hope you guys are liking the channel. Click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.